And at the beginning, this was it's this. This whole series is define your relationship with Jesus Christ. Know where you're at. Know if you are not 100% all in with Him. Know if you lost. And know if you're truly striving for a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ daily. And then if you are, you got to remember that anyone can come to Christ at any time. Amen? Anyone and everyone can come to Christ and start fresh. Praise the Lord, right? And that, that's wonderful news. And then he's going to ask something from you in your walk with him. Give me more. Yada, right? Know me and let me know you. Open up your chest. My son went and seen some Legos this week in the museum. And they got a Lego picture of a guy with his chest open and Legos. And Ethan told me yesterday, he said, Dad, that'd be a great sermon to preach on how to let God know your heart. Amen. Amen. Let him know you. Let him come in and embrace you. Let him know Yada. Know me. Now last week we, went, we saw the power of the cross, right? We see what it meant to take up your cross. That means some days when you wake when you wake up and you take up your cross daily, some days you want to suffer for the kingdom. But you realize that it is finished already. You have won because of Christ. And so you can strive every day to serve Him. Amen? And But why is that? Because of this. Jesus Christ is more than rules. He's enough. Amen? He's more than rules. He's enough. He come, come to fulfill the law. That's why law, the L plus the G equals the E. The law plus grace equals enough. We got the law. We need some grace. And that grace is Jesus Christ. And guess what? He makes it enough. Because he's enough that now you understand that the rules are not rules. They're just helping you fall deeper and deeper in love with God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Luke 9, 23. If anyone comes after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And that's where we're at, is to follow me. And we're at the end. Rules. We think about rules. Where do they come from? Where do rules come from? They come from our mistakes and from us pushing the limits in life. I try to tell people daily at work, why you got so many rules? Because we got a board up that's got 15 to 20 rules. And you got to, and there's more than that, but these are the main ones you need to follow. And they're like, why you got all these rules up here? I said, because you put them up there. You could come here and relax. Instead, you push the limits of life and say, all right, we're going to stop you from doing that. So we'll have a good day. So obey that rule. So the Ten Commandments, where did the Ten Commandments come from? It come from our mistakes, people doing whatever they want. And so Moses got with God and God says, give them these rules here. So if they will listen to these rules, they can have fellowship with me. And that was a powerful moment, wasn't it? Imagine Moses being up on, whoo, coming down with them tablets and saying, this is what he wants from us. But ultimately, there's what? There's a choice to obey the rules. But we need more than rules, don't we? If, they're just, if we just see a wall all the time, see the rules, it feels like they're just pointing a finger at us, right? Do this, do that, you do this. Because rules don't inspire grace. <laughs> do they? Rules don't inspire grace. Because according to anything in life, if you break a rule, what are you supposed to be? Punished, right? There's supposed to be a cause and effect. If you do, if you do wrong, here's the result from that. But if you obey the rules, nothing happens because there's nothing been done wrong. If you just, if there's no relationship there, if you just look at the rules. Let's go to John eight. John eight one through eleven. Then Jesus went to his own home. 
But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before, him, before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in an act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basics for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let it be in the... To be the one first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away at one, one at a time. The older ones first until only Jesus was left. When the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. Uh, it was a setup. You know, they were trying to use the law against Jesus. And I want you to understand something. Deuteronomy, here's what the law said. Deuteronomy 22. Here's what it says. Well, you were caught in the doctor back then. Here's what it said. It said, both parties shall be put to death. To stop, to get rid, to purge the evil out among you. Is why they said it. Both parties must die, so you must purge the evil from among you. And so they were saying, both parties must be killed. But what did the Pharisees and Sadducees do? They brought who? The woman. They didn't bring a man. So it's a big setup. So they're setting him up. And so they're trying to twist the law, what the law truly said, and said, this woman did wrong. So what's the law say? But guess what Jesus did? He came to fulfill the law, right? He brought grace. The word purge. Here's what the word purge means. Get rid of. Right? Get rid of. So how did Jesus come to fulfill the law? So how does that happen today? If this happened today, what would this person do? It's right there what Jesus says. Go now and leave your life of sin. Purge it. Repent. Amen? Amen. Turn from your sin. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent. And if you repent, what are you doing? You're killing yourself, right? You're saying no to sin. You're saying no more. I'm living for that. You are turning away from it. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Amen. You see how the, the grace comes in on top of that law? Has the law changed? He wants, God wants sin to die, doesn't he? He don't want it to reign in any of our lives. He wants it to die. And that's what he was doing back there in the Old Testament. If that person stopped, guess what happened that day forward? That sin stopped, right? If you kill both parties, that sin has stopped. And so you don't have this train effect of them passing on their sin to different people around them, right? It stops. It stops. Amen. Jesus Christ went to that cross. He took the board. You see, you see it last week. You saw the blood. His blood went for you for sin to stop in your life. He said, it is finished. It is over. But you got to give it to me. you got to repent. I'm here all day for you. Come to me. Follow me. Amen. Purge it. Give it to him. Get rid of it. He'll take it. Wash it clean. You can come out a new person. That woman left that place new. Amen. We all can leave whatever we got and become new. Amen? Man, it's good stuff. We ought to be standing up shouting hallelujah. Jesus. That, it, that's what we strive for. We strive for freedom in our hearts. We strive for love. And the only way we do this is if we get rid of stuff. If we give it to Jesus Christ and say, take this from me. And there's two ways to look at Christianity in this. And this is what we're looking at. And this is what I'm trying to pass down to my kids. This is what my and this is what it is. There's two ways to look at Christianity. There's, there's this. Let's just keep the moral code. My kids could grow up in church all day. 
all, all our lives and say this to you. Well, I've been taught to keep the moral code, do the right thing, and things will come to you. If my kids grow up that way, guess what they're going to do? They're going to run, run, run. I hope as my kids grow older that they will see Christianity is following deeper in love with Jesus Christ daily. Because if they fall in love deeper with Jesus Christ daily, guess what they're going to do? They're going to obey His rules. And if they mess up, guess what they're going to do? They're going to come back and say, Lord, help me get rid of this. Man, Jesus changed everything. Amen. He made so much more than what people say it is. The law has no relationship. If you look at that law, it has no relationship with you. But if you look at Jesus Christ and you understand what he did, a follower is going deeper with Jesus Christ. Jump back to John 6. John 6. I touched on this the first week. We're going to look at another part of the passage briefly. John 6, starting at verse 25. Before I read it, we'll give you a little back information. Jesus just fed the 5,000. People are following him. He's teaching to them. He's feeding them. And honestly, the 5,000 is really 15,000 because they're just counting the men. They're not counting the children and the moms that are with them. So they're, they're, they're estimating 15,000 people Jesus fed from heaven. The man had come from heaven, 15,000 people fed. Jesus gets away from everybody. He goes and prays. He comes back. He walks on the water. People see him. He tells them, do not be afraid. He's with the disciples. And here we are in verse 25. The people coming. They found Jesus. They're coming back to him. It's the next day. So guess what? If you ate in the morning, are you going to be hungry in the, in the next If you ate yesterday evening, you're going to be hungry the next day, right? And so they're looking for Jesus. They're looking for Jesus. Why? They're hungry. They want to eat again. There are 15,000 people away from everything. They want to get fed again. Jesus called out from heaven again, do this miraculous thing, we can get fed. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, where did you, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, I'll tell you the truth. You are looking for me not because you saw where miraculous signs, but because you are at the eight loaves and had your field. Meaning, you want some more. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works that God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. John 3, 16, believe, right? Believe that he come for you, Luke 9, is accepted. So they asked him, what, what miraculous signs then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them the bread from heaven to eat. Do you realize the people just slapped him in the face? The people just slapped Jesus in the face. What did Jesus just do the day before? He fed 15,000 people with a fish and some bread. Is that not a miracle and a, and a sign and a wonder? It is. Jesus tells them now, follow me. And guess what they say? Well, give us another miracle. Give us another sign. And he's like, what? What? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives you life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, Give us this bread. That Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. He's trying to get the people to look past the physical. I am here for you. I am here. Jesus, guess what? Honestly, Jesus is not about signs and wonders right now. Today, he's not about signs and wonders. What is he about? He's about being in each one of your lives. Amen? Touching each one of your lives. Healing each one of your lives. If that were, were true, there would still be great big events where people would come together and just a great pouring or something would happen. 
But it's not like that right now. It is individual. And that's more powerful. Isn't it? Because one person can pass it on. It's like the game of telephone. You can pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Amen? You can pass on what God is doing. Jesus is not about signs and wonders, but by bringing grace and love, allowing you to be redeemed and not sentenced to death. Would you hear that again? Jesus is not about signs and wonders, but by bringing you grace and love, allowing you to be redeemed and not sentenced to death. Amen. You need to hear it again. Jesus is not about signs and wonders, but by bringing you grace and love, allowing you to be redeemed and not sentenced to death. Not guilty, but you're free. You're free to go. You've been purged. Amen? You have been purged. Let it go. But it costs you. It costs you one thing. If anyone comes after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and here it is. And follow me. Follow me. To wherever that may be. Amen? I'm going to be brutally honest with you right now. Brutally honest. Right now, if I had a choice, if I had a choice right now in my life, right now, I would be in West Virginia. I would pack it up tomorrow and go to West Virginia. To be with my family. Because all of a sudden they've been going through through the years and I've been away. I would go home instantly if I could. But when you really know Jesus, you don't want to leave him. So I'm not going to put my life back in my hands and go to West Virginia. If I don't go back to West Virginia, it's going to be because the Lord said, go. Amen. That's why I'm with you. Amen. You see how following me costs a sacrifice. Because if it was up to me, I'd have been there since 2008. Taking care of my family. But Jesus has me at 17 years old, follow me. Amen. Amen. So we all need to be that bold for him. And say, I want to leave my family, I want to leave all that, and follow you. And guess what comes from that? The grace to handle that. The grace to come to his throne and give him my tears and my heartache and my pain and say, Lord, give my family comfort. Give me comfort. And guess what he does? He'll do it. Amen? Because I don't want to be sentenced to death. I don't want to be against God. I want to follow Him. I want to be on His side. Because on His side is grace and love. And because of that, my family is receiving grace and love. Amen. They're getting what I can't give them. And that's peace in their hearts and, and love in their hearts from God. Because they could call me and they could beg me to come home. You know, one time my dad begged me to come home to help him. Yeah, I told Carl this. He had a water leak in the dead of winter. And I don't, well, we have water leak bust. It bust. We live in a big old hill, okay? And it busted up halfway, about 500 yards from the house. And we, my dad had to dig it up. Three feet to find the leak. And he had help from his family all week. But then come the weekend, and they all, come Monday, and they all had to go back to work. My dad calls me. He says, so... I could hear the tears in his eyes. I need your help. And I didn't know what was going on. He didn't tell me yet. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, I got a water leak and I just can't find it. I got, I got no more energy left. I need help. Got the phone. Said, honey, I got to go. That was it. You know? Went home, helped him, got it done, and come back. So it's just following him costs sacrifice. And that's what fans don't realize. They just want the gravy. True Christianity is, I want potatoes with the gravy. Amen? I want the whole thing. I want to follow him 
get the potatoes, and then guess what he'll send? He'll send that gravy, and that's that blessing. That's the smiles that get on people's faces around you. That's the smiles of people come when they come to follow Christ. All that. Amen? Amen. So be, be, a, be a follower of Jesus Christ. Stop being a fan. Move on. It's time to move on. It's time to go deeper. Amen?